Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to talk about what the purpose of a texture is in SDL. That is the SDL texture abstraction. And then we're also going to clean up our code a little bit so that we can start doing some fun things with textures. So I'll go ahead and just do a little bit of cleanup because I want to again show you every line that we're doing in this series of code. So anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So previously, we've talked about surfaces and blitting surfaces. That's where we started a few episodes ago here. And basically, when we were blitting or using those blit functions or copying pixels from one surface to the other, whether that is on one surface being the window surface or just another surface that we create, that's somewhat of a costly operation, right? In our CPU time, we want to reserve for things like maybe some simulation, the gameplay logic, these types of things in our SDL application. So instead, we have since added in the SDL renderer, which hard, allows for hardware acceleration. And that's what we want to be using for drawing our graphics. That's what our GPU is good at. And then we can leave our CPU for doing the sort of gameplay and logic stuff. OK, so we want to move away from this idea of blitting here. And that, thus, that's why we have this abstraction as a SDL texture that we're going to be looking at today here. Now, textures, basically, as we have them, are uh, quads that we draw on our screen here. So quad or two triangles that form a rectangular shape here. And then we paste a texture on top of it. So this is a nice example here. You can look at the truck, for instance, and see that it is just a quad with two quads for the wheels. Even though we see the circular wheels and the more detailed body of the car there, we can see that that's simply just some texture that has been uploaded, or rather pixels that have been uploaded to the GPU, sometimes called texels if you want to be fancy. But otherwise, that outline the shape that we want and give us a lot more detail. But really, all we're paying for, and this is the cool thing, and you can see it below here in the bottom right screen, that we just have two quads for the wheels and a quad for the body. So three quads to get this really, really nice detailed car there. Now, that's pretty cool here when you see that that's all it is. And it's a real illusion when you figure that out as a programmer. So uh, I'll have some tutorials here. Here's my old one if you've seen it on SDL2, but we're gonna update that in this series here. And let's go ahead and talk just a little bit more about exactly what we're doing. So in order to create a texture, basically what we're doing is we need to allocate it, right? And where are we allocating it? Well, on the graphics card here. So basically what we're gonna do here is on our CPU, create a surface, something like this, this smiley face. You can see the individual pixels loaded from perhaps a bitmap image. And then we'll upload or call this function SDL create texture to create a texture from this surface. And now that'll upload these pixels onto our graphics memory. We can actually get rid of that surface that's on the CPU if we don't need it. That's gonna be up to us if we think we'll use that surface again or modify it. But otherwise, we have in a separate location a copy of those pixels that were on our CPU on our GPU. And now our GPU can draw these really, really fast. And that's really all there is to it. OK, and SDL makes this really, really easy for us. So let's go ahead and dive into our code a little bit here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is first, I want to just clean up our project a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this little particle uh, experiment that we had here because uh, it was a fun little uh, coding session here. But uh, let's just go ahead and get rid of it. Maybe we could save it uh, for another day here. Um, and let's get rid of our particle system just because I want to show you from scratch what we have in our application. We might add some other uh, abstractions later on if we think they're uh, useful. But we don't need all of this uh, noise for now. So we'll get rid of our particle system and our update here and basically get ourselves back to uh, square number one, so to speak here, uh, of drawing here. So we won't draw any more points here. OK, so how's our application look so far? Again, we have our SDL application with a window and a renderer for hardware acceleration. Uh, some state here for if we're running or in full screen. We can leave that here. And then we have this surface here, a test surface for us to play with. Now. Since we're going to be moving to doing things on the graphics card, we don't really need this to be some state that we hold here for now. So I'm going to actually get rid of that here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is um, I will put this in, uh, let's put this in our uh, constructor here, this surface. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of the m uh, suffix or prefix there and just call it surface there because it's not a member variable. Uh, and we'll make use of this. Uh, here for creating a surface. Okay, so let's go ahead and 
do this. Let's do this in one line here just to make it a little bit more concise and show you a different style. And I need to load some bitmap image here. Now in this folder, I do have a character that I modeled here. Uh, just briefly here, let's zoom in here. Here's a little guy here, just some pixel art here of very average uh, design. <laughs> so we'll load up that character and be able to display them. And again, we could do some error checking here, but let's let's assume for now we are safe here, just so our code doesn't get cluttered up in this tutorial. Uh, and basically what I wanna do here is then create a texture from this surface. So let's go ahead and dive into our SDL documentation. Let's go into accelerated uh, 2D accelerated rendering. And I'm going to search for SDL uh, create texture functions. And the one that I'm most frequently going to be using is this create texture from surface. Uh, we do have create texture, which I'll show you here, which allows us to just create a texture of a specific format. And there's reasons you might want an empty texture to render into, uh, but we're not going to get into that quite yet. So let's just go with create texture from surface. And again, this creates a GPU where this texture is going to live. Uh, texture from a surface where we have pixels loaded in this surface object on line 34. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this function here. And it really is as simple as uh, it returns a texture object. So let's go ahead and create a member function for our texture. Uh, and again, we always have to associate these with a specific render, uh, mostly SDL functions, and then the surface that we're creating the texture from. So let's just call this surface here. And let's make this M texture uh, part of our application state here. SDL texture, M texture, something like that. And now let's actually figure out how to draw this texture or draw this character in our screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go down. This is gonna be part of our rendering here. Uh, so let's go into our render function and let's draw a texture. So how do we do this here? Well, we have a few functions uh, of interest here. Let's go ahead and see if we can find them in our render here. So let's just search for things related to texture. Uh, now we do need to destroy our texture uh, when we're done with it. We should probably destroy our surface. Let's see if we did that properly in our destructor as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and scroll up here. I'm gonna toggle out our input. We won't be needing that for a while here just so we don't have to scroll as much. Uh, let's see, in our application, Okay, so if I'm done with my surface here, if I don't need it anymore, I can actually destroy it. So let's do SDL destroy surface. And then let's make sure in our destructor, we do SDL destroy uh, texture. Uh, and I suppose I didn't do SDL destroy render. <laughs> Looks like I've been uh, not doing all of my destruction here. And I should also do SDL destroy window. Some of you might have caught that. Maybe it's already in the comments uh, by the time I watch this. But let's go ahead and try to build this, see if I messed up anything. Uh, let's see, I always spell this a little bit wrong. And I'm kind of doing them in order. Uh, but yeah, this, this seems good. Looks like we're in a good state here. So we've created our texture. Uh, we've probably destroyed it in our destructor. Our surface that we only needed temporarily in this particular example is here. Now, if I'm going to create more textures from this surface, it might be keeping worth keeping this surface around. And usually you could introduce some sort of resource management class. Maybe we'll get into that later. Um, but that's uh, the idea here. OK. All right. So now let's get back to our uh, focus uh, of rendering uh, and ultimately drawing a texture here. So let's see what functions we have available here. OK. So we have lots of things here that we could do with uh, textures, uh, including modifying them. Uh, but this this looks promising, SDL render texture. In fact, we have a bunch of different functions for rendering. So we're going to have some separate videos on this just to explain the, the concepts. But let's just start with SDL render texture. So this says copy a portion of the texture to the current rendering target at sub-pixel precision. Okay, so sub-pixel meaning uh, I can do this with floating point values. That's super cool. That's kind of a new thing with uh, SDL3 focusing on that. Uh, but let's just go ahead and uh, copy this in. Um, and basically, again, we're going to need a render as the first argument, the texture that we want to draw, the source rectangle, so our selection of the particular portion of the texture that we want, or we can say null to draw the whole thing, and then the destination, where we're drawing into. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of look at this. 
Uh, and again, it'll return true or false if it uh, successfully works. Let's pass in our renderer, pass in our texture. Uh, I'm going to say that we want to draw the whole thing for now. So I'm just going to pass in null. And then the destination, well, that's something that I should create here. So let's go ahead and create a SDLF uh, rect here. I'm just going to call it, let's just call it destination rectangle, something like that here. Uh, and again, if your compiler supports it, you can use the syntax to make this a little bit easier. So I could just specify the X. Um, let's just do like 50, just to make it a little bit different. The Y position, 25. So it'll be kind of in the corner of our window. Uh, the width, uh, let's see if I actually open up this character. I don't remember the exact dimensions here. Let's see if we can get some of the properties here. Image properties, 24 by 28 pixels. Okay, so let's do 24 and the height, 28. Okay, and that's gonna be our destination. And again, like all these things, they take in a pointer as the argument. So I'll pass in the destination of the rectangle. Uh, the pointer uh, reason for that probably is because it's a little bit more efficient to pass eight bytes rather than make a copy of this, which holds one, two, three, four fields as you know integer or floating point fields, floating point fields here, so it's a little bit smaller. So if you've, if you've been wondering about why is everything pointers, uh, <laughs> that might be part of the answer here. All right, so now if we uh, do this, you can see our little guy here. And if you kept from the previous video, let me uh, scroll up here. Uh, the logical presentation stuff and the set full screen. We should be able to full screen this and then you can see our character here, okay? Um, and again, with a letterbox, it's hard to tell exactly uh, where they are, but we can make this small and you can see that they're about at the uh, right mark here, okay? So that's pretty cool. We've got our first uh, texture loaded here. And then you can imagine if you change with our uh, destination rectangle here, the X in the Y position here, which let's go ahead and do that here. Let's go ahead and say our destination rectangle dot X. Uh, let's do plus equal. Let's just make it move really slowly right now uh, to the corner. So again, this is running at 60 frames per second. Uh, let's go ahead and rebuild and rerun this. Uh, that might be a little bit too slow here. Let's do 0.01. So every 100 frames, it'll move uh, almost a pixel. Uh, let's see here. That might be a little bit too slow yet again. Sorry, right, let's do this a little bit faster. It'll eventually move off the screen here. Um, but we should see, yeah, it's still going pretty slow here. Our character moving a little bit here, which is kind of neat. Yeah, let's just make it one. <laughs> 60, 60 pixels uh, per second here. Oops, one dot. All right, just so you can see the rumblings of a game here. Ah, and actually I made a little mistake here, sorry. Um, since this, yeah, this is not going to uh, update here. Uh, I could cheat here. Here, let's just I make this static so it'll only be initialized once. Now it's going to fly off. I was wondering why it wasn't moving that much here, uh, playing around with these values here. Let's try that here. There we go. Now we can see our little character moving. Okay, so... You know, that's pretty much the start of a game here. If you can draw a texture and then start moving around these rectangles, that sounds like we're getting pretty close to being able to build something, which is super cool. So we're almost ready to start doing a little mini game project to start putting together all these little pieces here. But as a challenge, go ahead and see if you can load a texture uh, by loading up first a surface of some image or sprite you create or otherwise find and then have it move around the screen a little bit. Maybe you can have it bounce around in the different corners or do something fun or add a little particle simulation uh, of some sort, uh, but instead this time using textures. Oh, there goes our guy. So it must be time for us to also go as well. So with that said, folks, thanks again for your time and attention. Hopefully you had fun learning about, oh, there we go, uh, our textures here. Uh, and getting things to move here. Again, it's always a really cool thing to see how much you can do with SDL with very few lines of code when we think about having, again, this windowed application that resizes appropriately, handles input, output, and now we can actually draw and move stuff around. So again, this is a really exciting lesson. So hopefully you're having fun and learning some cool stuff. Anyways, folks, thank you again for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.